Hi, welcome to Academic Writing About Literature. I'm Cynthia Sims, and we'll be going through the beginnings of this class, and welcome. So the course description, Welcome to English 211. This course we read, discuss, and write about a variety of texts, ranging from short stories to longer pieces and poems and film clips. So your learning goals for this course are to write analytically about literary texts of various kinds, um, researching materials, synthesizing ideas from scholarly sources, and developing essays according to grammatical, mechanical, stylistic, um, different styles. So the required texts, probably the most important thing we'll talk about today is that you will need the Norton Anthology of Theory and Criticism. And um, it is a longer text, but we'll be using several pieces from it. The MLA Handbook for Writers of Research Papers is also strongly recommended. The OWL at Purdue will give you enough information to be able to write your research paper, but finding the information on the OWL at Purdue will be your responsibility. So regular access to a computer and using Firefox, not Explorer, will be really important for this class. So the required Communication is daily to every other day via attendance email, Blackboard. Basically, check in regularly. It's an online course, but the onus is on you to keep current and to make sure that you're checking Gradebook and checking our class website, which is here on Blackboard. So check in. Um, I teach several classes. My background is in literature, so I have um, quite a bit of experience writing analytically about literature. So I have several classes that I have an instructor on, um, also learning communities. I also do layout and do some several other um, writing projects, literature, is a big part of my life. So I do edit, associate edit for Circ um, Journal, which is a huge, amazing journal in this area. It's a five state journal. So so Circ Literary Journal is here. You can submit to Circ if you're a writer or an artist of some sort um, <clears throat> can get an idea about the journal here if you're interested. Um, I've had a couple of things in CERC and I also do readings, original poetry readings as an associate editor. So this is our class blog. Our class blog is operational. So I'm going to go here so you can kind of see what I see. Um, we have three new entries, so that's awesome. And I gave you some information about what you can put in your professional, personal type blog. Um, these are just ideas um, that you can glean from. So in case you run out of ideas, you can find some to write about. And you should be able to see one another's blogs. So this is what it's like when I go in there because I'm going to go in and grade them. So this is a student in our class. This is Josh. This is his experience. And so I'll go through and read these. Um, and he's a three-year RA, as you can see from his blog, so that's kind of cool. And it's an online class, so they really do expect you to spend the time to do this blog so that we can get to know you a little bit. So this is Kristen Foster, um, so that's awesome. She's traveling to three rural villages in the Nana region, volunteer work for the Junior Achievement Program. So everybody has different reasons for doing the online classes, and I really appreciate your um, kind of being more open in asking questions and getting to know each other online um, so that we can develop a community of working with each other. We'll be using different gradebook um, ways of communicating such as using voice comments so that we can kind of get a little bit of a feel for each other even though it's a little bit difficult when we're in an online atmosphere. So I've taught a couple other online classes, but I'll be doing more. This class, um, with communication with one another. Um, and so what I use 
is to record our classrooms are um, is screen, screen class screencast o -matic. Um, It's very simple to use and it records a video of you and a video of what we're doing on screen. So I'm going to go to our class syllabus again. And we talk a lot of in this class about the birth of the reader must be at the cost of the death of the author. It's completely the opposite of the idea of what is wonderful about great literature is that it transforms the man who reads it toward the condition of the man who wrote. So that's Ian Forrester. So it, there is this idea that goes back and forth. Is it about the person who wrote it? Is it about the writing itself? Does the writing stand alone? And so if that sort of thing interests you, you'll really enjoy this class because we do talk a lot about that a lot. So um, you have expected to read each day's assignment, participate in class discussions, be an open reader, um, access to commuter or reliable internet is really important enough to you. Keep in mind that, you know, as far as plagiarism goes, don't bore me by plagiarizing because it's, it's almost so easy for me to tell that something is not you. Um, and it's just usually out of your stress with not staying current that you find something online that doesn't really fit the assignment instructions and becomes pretty obvious that it's not from you. Um, so my policy in this class is that I send it forward and I don't have any idea how that turns out, but you, um, if I'm concerned about, about cheating in the class, then basically you have to deal with the Dean of Students office. So, um, the policy in this class is non-negotiable. There were quizzes. There was some extra credit for attending a theater production, concert poetry reading. You can do revisions. They're optional. Um, UAA Reading and Writing Center is really an important resource for those of you who can make it there. Um, there's some policies here that you can review. Submitting late work, submitting papers electronically. Please name your files, your name, and what it is, the assignment title. So that's important to me because when I download something, which often will open something, I may need to download it. So I need you to name it something meaningful so that it has your name attached to it as well as the assignment. Okay, so we're going through reading response theory, gender and psychological criticism, and eco-criticism and historical studies. So an another few pointers about papers and topics are um, <clears throat> shorter and longer papers are discouraged. Um, differing from the guideline will harm your grade. Don't be creative unless you're talking about within your topic idea. Um, so thoughtful and thorough work takes the space that it's given. Avoid fluff, restatement, repetition, wordiness. <clears throat> so longer papers usually lack focus. Shorter papers usually aren't elaborated on enough. Um, so keep in mind that when I'm asking you to read something, I'm also asking you to kind of give that back to me in the form of writing within your assignments. So that's the proof that the reading has happened. It's happening in your assignments. So utilizing the reading and videos that we watch by pointedly talking about them for your paper is strongly encouraged. Having a clear thesis at the outset um, that the rest of your work supports will be a strong indicator that the paper was planned. So start your own paragraph with your own claim, not a quote, and use quotes for support. Explain them afterwards. Cite every time and then explain your quotations. Don't just sort of drop quotes here and there. So you do them very thoughtfully, explain them and introduce them. So um, there's Blackboard Discussion Board and you can go through the rest of this syllabus on your own. Otherwise, emails <clears throat> to me should always be professional. So um, open all the emails with a greeting, say, hi, this is my name and conclude with your name. Use a descriptive subject line and be as clear as possible. You have to use your UAA Gmail account. So, um, so you're gonna use your UAA email account, go on UAA webmail, and you would log in here. And you have to log in here because I can't communicate with you about attendance or about any sort of grade policy or any of your grading unless you use this email account. You can forward it to your own account, but you also have to go in here and clean this out or it won't work. 
So make sure that you're using Gmail. I log on. <clears throat> so this is my account. This is CL Dica Sims at uaa.alaska.edu. And then I log in and then I find um, 8 million student emails. So that's awesome. Um, and so back to the syllabus and the first reading. So your calendar is here. In week one, you have an introduction. But you also have a whole lot of work. So on here you have your welcome, you have reader response theory, and new criticism. So read closely, read thoughtfully, make sure that you're reading all of this stuff. And then I will actually not do another video posting until the end of the week. And then I'll put another one on here that kind of reviews some of this information, at which point it will help you very much to have watched this video and to done have done this reading. So um, there are a ton of things to read and there are a ton of, um, of videos to watch throughout the course, but it's not more than you can handle in a day. So some of this information is just about your paper submissions. Um, in this 500 word paper, I want you to include a discussion of the video and the reading. Um, and then I will give you more specific information to follow, which means don't start yet. Don't start writing the paper. So your due dates will be on here. It's a condensed course, so it'll be quick. But your job right now is to annotate as you read everything you read and respond to the text as you read so that when you go to write your paper and I give you a specific guideline, you're better able to follow it. So you're going to submit on Blackboard when I give you a post and then um, your postings on Blackboard for right now is just your bio profile post. So by the end of the week, I will give you a more firm update on your first paper, which will most likely be at the start of next week. So there are some definitions here. So make sure that you visit here and <clears throat> read a response criticism. This is also in your book. But this is a sort of um, very good sources, very well sourced um, information on reader response criticism. So my thesis is under my last name, former, includes work on Jouse. So this is my ProQuest document. Um, <clears throat> so this is my thesis, it was on reader response theory and how two audiences, Jewish and non-Jewish, received the poetry of Isaac Rosenberg and examines his shifting place in the World War I poetry canon. So I use Jossian reception theory, looking at audiences respond to how works of responses to work have changed over time. So we understand our own culture better if we're alert to the nuances, the uncertainties, the contradictions, and decidability of our own signifying practices and the, the sort of meaning we associate with works as we read them. Um, in our time, <clears throat> so, and how those change over time. So this, this thesis concludes that the anti-orthodox, anti-heroic details of this particular poet's work initially caused it to fit uncomfortably. People basically shunned him in the English canon, but then over time he became sort of the a, a definitive expression of modern warfare. So that, that changed. Um, so what I want you to do is kind of launch yourself into um, the readings and the information that I've given you. Um, but mostly, first of all, start with your class blog. And I look forward to talking to you again more later this week. Have a great day.